Huh? Yeah, good evening and welcome to the August 13th, 2020 meeting of the Haverford Township Planning Commission. Uh, Kelly, could you please call roll? Sure. Mr. Capuzzi? Present. Mr. Reardon? Present. Mr. Poynton? Present. Mr. Shannon? Present. Ms. Dobbs? Here. Mr. Fiordimundo? Mr. Garrett? Here. Okay, for the record, I'd like to mention that Dr. Hart, who's a member of the Board of Commissioners, is with us this evening, as is Paul David. And I assume Paul is a member of the Shade Tree Commission. Would I be correct in that assumption? That is correct. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay. So, so the first item on our agenda this evening, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'd ask everyone to uh, repeat the Pledge of Allegiance with me. I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to the flag, to the flag of, of the United States, United States of, America. of America and to the Republic, Republic of the for which it stands, stands, one nation, one nation under, God, under God, indivisible, indivisible with liberty and justice, and justice for, all. for all. Thank you. Okay. First item on the agenda is the minor subdivision at 201 Greenbrier Lane. I see the uh, representative of, uh, I'm sorry, Chris Yan, the, the uh, civil engineer of record is with us, as is Mr. Spazzato. Vince, you there? I am, yes. I, okay. I cannot get my video to work. I apologize. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, okay, Chris, when we left off last time, you had some items to address on your plans. And I know that you resubmitted your plans and we have a review letter dated August the 12th, 2020 from Pannoni Associates. Um, why don't you uh, quickly go through that letter, uh, let us know where things stand and uh, if you have any questions or, or comments regarding the review letter. Okay, thank you. Uh, I did receive the review letter and I did go over that with Mr. Faulkner and I think I'm clear on all the, the changes we need. I don't think anything is questionable, but I'll run through them to tell you how we are going to make the revisions. So item one has to do with the steep slopes. Um, in the beginning is the original comment and then the follow-up says adjustments to very steep or to steep and very steep slopes have been made. Additional modifications are necessary in various areas of the lots to, to fully delineate all slopes. Uh, there was an area behind uh, the detached structure on lot two uh, that Mr. Faulkner once designated as steep slopes. And so I'm going to make a change to the plan to address that. That will not affect any of the proposed improvements. It's in an area outside of disturbance. Okay. Before I go on, Chuck Faulkner. Yes. Um, is the amount of disturbance that is being done within the limits that's allowed by code? It's up to 15%. Is so called. it's right at the limit? It, it's close. It's close. Okay. And other than that, it's just a matter of delineating everything that's on the property? Yeah, we want to clean up the plan to make sure that it's accurate in case, you know, in the future somebody wants to do something, they know what's there. Okay. All right. So this is an item that you think can be resolved without much of a problem? Should be able to, Mr. Cruz. Okay. Yes. Okay. Go ahead. Chris. And number two says the error of questionable title shall be resolved in documentation of the resolution provided prior to, uh, prior to final plan approval. So right around when we were submitting is when we were resolving this. So I didn't have a chance to revise on the plan, but uh, basically it, it was questionable between this property and the adjacent. And to make it easier, Mr. Uh, Spazzato said, leave it to the adjacent property. We'll take it out of ours. I didn't have a chance to correct that yet, but we will. Um, to address that item. Okay. The next says an approved planning module uh, or an approved uh, Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection sewage facilities planning module or exemption is required. So we do have to go through the full planning module process. We do have the letter from uh, RHM and uh, Delcora and the other entities that, that each of they, uh, those agencies represent. Uh, and we submitted a letter to Philadelphia Water Department and we're waiting to hear back from them. So once we have all of those approvals, we will package the planning module together 
and submitted to the township and then DEP for final approval. Okay. Uh, item four says for, uh, this is regarding the driveway and we were too close to the intersection. So I'm just gonna read the follow-up portion of the comment says, partially addressed the applicant has revised the driveway configuration for lot one to enable a car to turn around uh, and pull out onto the street rather than back out. The configuration, however, proposes a driveway that exceeds the maximum 25 foot width permitted under 182-707A4. The applicant shall investigate alternative configurations that are in conformance with 182-707A4. And so we are, uh, I will trim the driveway so that we are right at that 25 foot width. Uh, it means that instead of pulling, once you're pulling out of the garage, instead of backing up uh, one way and then going right out towards the street, we'll probably have to back up a little bit, pull forward, back up again, and then go out. So it, it adds a little bit of a turning movement, but we will comply with that. Um, okay. That section. Number five is regarding the tree removal. And so the follow-up question says, the applicant should provide the report from the certified arborist regarding the 13 trees to be removed to the Shade Tree Commission. So I believe we did already forward that to the Shade Tree Commission. However, since that original report was done, uh, two other neighbors have expressed concerns to Mr. Spizzato and his tree guy was out two additional times, has two additional reports um, that were forwarded to me today. And so we have, we have to forward those to the Shade Tree Commission yet. Have you met with them yet? We have not, we have uh, emailed information to them, but I don't believe they've had a meeting uh, in recent months. So we're, we're happy to meet with them, but we have not yet. Paul, uh, how are you handling that on your end? Uh, we have not seen the plans yet, as far as I know. And we have had Zoom meetings uh, every month. And nothing, you know, usually uh, it's Joe Celia that presents the plans to us. So he gets them and- Okay, Kelly, can you make to... sure that, that the Shade Tree Commission gets a copy of the plans? Um, I can forward them to, uh, to liaison for the Shade Tree Commission, but, um, if you wouldn't mind, um, when you do have the revised plans for them to review, if you could just email them over to me, um, and that way, actually, do you guys prefer physical copies? The Shade Tree Commission? I'm sorry. Yes. Yes. Yeah, okay. Physical copy. I'm sorry. Yeah. If you could, get, uh, and there's seven of you now, right? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, seven physical copies or eight for one for the office as well. That'd be great. Okay, Chris, um, the Shade Tree Commission has to weigh on, has to review the plans and give you their comments, both on the plans and the, the reports that your arborists did before this can move on to the Board of Commissioners. You understand that, okay? I understand that it needs to go to the Shade Tree Commission. I guess the part I don't understand is uh, whether it needs to go back to the Planning Commission. My understanding with most municipalities is that the board uh, takes reports from each of the separate commissions. And so I understand we need to go to Shade Tree and the board can't act on it before we get uh, a recommendation from Shade Tree, but I assume we can still get through the Planning Commission. Oh, we'll see. Okay, okay number seven. Number seven says, uh, the follow-up says, no two on sheet four shall clearly indicate the quantity of future impervious accounted for in the current design for each lot. In addition, the calculations within the stormwater management report must document all assumptions used to develop the system. Finally, the proposed building coverage for lot two indicated in the summary table on sheet one is inconsistent with both the measured area and stormwater management report. So those are all will comply items. The issue with the building coverage is it's the same building on both lots, but lot two shows a higher uh, square footage and that's because we're including the detached structure in the back so I'm going to separate that out so it, it's clear uh, why that lot has more uh, we're all, I, I talked to Mr. Faulkner about this we're also going to uh, we have one note on the plan that's in sentence form about the future impervious and I'm going to change that to be a chart and I'm going to uh, expand on it so that it it notes for each lot how much was designed for and what the future is so it doesn't uh, there's no changes to the calculations that need to be done. It's just uh, a change to the presentation of the, uh, the future impervious so that it's clear for future owners. Okay. Number eight uh, says the uncontrolled drainage area does not appear to include a portion of the infiltration bed number one. So we did revise the calculations to 
try to include everything, but I think we put the system over a few feet after we got the file disturbance area. So uh, we will we'll comply with this. Uh, we'll revise it again to make sure it's right. Um, number nine. Uh, it was regarding the location of the spreaders. It says partially address the applicant has adjusted the location of the level spreaders to provide for overland flow before reaching the steep slopes. Some level of modification, i.e. drain holes may be required to the wall on lot one to avoid blocking the flow and or directing flow towards lot two. So we will uh, we'll address that comment. I believe Mr. Faulkner and I discussed that before and we were going to show a little regrading to get the water uh, next to the wall on the uh, on the high side of the wall to make sure it gets into that swale at the, the lower side of the lot. Okay. Um, 10 and 11, forget, I mean, that's standard stuff. I understand that. Yep. Uh, number 12 is monuments to be added at the corner of the questionable area of title. So that's what we'll do. The new comments, uh, number 13 has to do with the chimney projection. Uh, we show it as 24 inches, and so I will revise it to be 18 so it complies with the code. And number 14 is is the note that you requested for the right of way, which we will add to the plan. Okay, add to that the um, meets and bounds for the ultimate right of way. Oh. That information still has to be added to the title plan so that when someone writes a legal description, they'll have something to write. Okay. Um, kind of to follow up with um, along the same lines, are we going to be, are you going to revise and um, re-record the deed for the neighboring property once the title's um, situation is taken care of? I will confirm that with the surveyor, but I believe we won't have to re-record the one for the adjacent property because that's the one that we will say is is correct and we'll adjust this property to match that okay so so that's that, that's already included in their mid and description i believe so but okay. i'll confirm that super okay so it sounds like you intend to comply with all the comments in the latest review letter that's correct okay and uh who's here jack have any Questions or comments, Jack? Uh, no, I wasn't clear on whether or not we required the shared driveway or not. I, I was looking at the notes on that and I couldn't no, see. We, we kind of felt that wasn't appropriate in this case. I have no comments. Okay. Maggie, I know you have a comment. Uh, I don't actually. Um... You do. Yes, you do. Do I? Yeah. There's a shade tree that was supposed to be moved off the property line. That's still oh, on the sorry. property line. Yes, that's right. Um, right. So I had asked before there was the one tree that was on the property line. So just confirm that that would be on officially one property or the other to clarify ownership and maintenance. Right. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Yep. You're welcome. Jesse. I have no comments. Why is it sunny where you are? <laughs> I'm a lot further east than you guys. Okay. West, you mean? No, east You're and Maine. East. Okay. Yeah. Sun's up. Who else? Chuck, Mr. Reardon. No, I'm fine. You're okay. Yeah. All righty. I miss anybody. Dr. Hart, do you have any comments or questions? Okay. And uh, Paul, at some point in time, your group is going to get a set of plans and an arborist report for this development, in which case you'll review the landscaping plan, proposed right. landscaping, and make a recommendation to the Board of Commissioners. Right. Great. Um, okay, you. while I have you, um, actually, this is, you should come to every meeting. Uh, your next meeting is August 24th? Yes, that's yes. correct. Okay. It'll be a Zoom meeting as, right. as well. Okay. Dr. Faulkner, anything? I don't have anything further. Nope. Yes, Chris. Uh, is there, and I, I should clarify, when I said we submitted, we submitted electronic copies to Mr. Seeley. We did not submit paper copies yet. I was waiting for a confirmation of, of how many and when the meeting was. So now that I know the meeting is on the 24th, uh, Kelly, did you say there's seven members, so I should submit seven copies? Yes. Yeah. And you want an extra one? Oh, I was going to say yes, uh, and, and one extra for the for the, our files. Okay, so eight copies, and is there a... 
submission date in order to get on that agenda? That is uh, a one week beforehand would be nice. Okay, so eight, eight, the seventeenth. Okay. Thank you. Okay, that's Monday. Right. Okay. Um, all right. So I would entertain a motion if anyone wants to make it regarding uh, approval or disapproval of this plan. Angelo, would you do that? Because I believe under the circumstances, you have <laughs> the, the uh, ability to uh, tie all of the pieces together better than anybody else. Okay. Hold on. Dave, are you there? I don't hear or say anything. Yes. You. you there, Dave? I am. Oh, okay. We can't see you. Uh, I have a little video problem. I'm working on it. Okay. I, I, I didn't mean to skip over. Uh, do you have any comments or questions? I'm okay. Okay. All right. Well, then I will make a motion that the uh, proposed minor subdivision on Greenbrier Lane for um, I'm, I'm sorry, I forget the name of the developer, Mr. Spizzato. I know it's not called that. Sleepy Valley Holdings, LLC. I recommend that that plan be approved subject to the following conditions. Uh, first, that all the comments contained in the August 12, 2020 <coughs> review letter of the township engineer be addressed to the satisfaction of the township, that the meets and bounds data for the proposed right of way be added to the record plan and that the all proposed shade trees be located at least two feet away from any property line or right of way line. And that the two waivers that the applicant is requesting and requesting regarding a location of storm drainage facilities within 400 feet of the site and the minimum partway width of 27 feet be approved. I'm seconding that. Thank you. Anybody have any comments or questions about the <clears throat> motion? No. Okay. Uh, Kelly can take roll call, please. Okay. Mr. Capuzzi? Yes. Mr. Reardon? Yes. Mr. Poynton? Yes. Mr. Shannon? Yes. Ms. Dobbs? Yes. And Mr. Garrett? Yes. Okay, Chris, thank you, Vince, thank you, good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. And you can sign off. Okay. Okay, I guess next on the agenda is uh, proposed ordinance revising chapter 170, which is trees. And uh, before we get into the nuts and bolts, I guess, Paul, if you wanna give us a little update on that or what you guys are thinking? Sure. Um, so the, the tree code has not been reviewed for many years. Um, I've been on that tree commission five years and we haven't reviewed it uh, through, through that period. So we decided last year to take a look at it, update it. And in that process began to look at some of the uh, tree codes of adjacent townships, uh, Lower Marion, Radnor, Springfield, uh, Upper Darby, so forth. Um, and one of the issues that comes up as we review plans is there is um, a part of the code entitled the tree protection zone. It's actually a misnomer because it is actually the tree non-protection zone. Um, what it says is that a planned building or renovation uh, plus 16 feet around that footprint uh, is not to be included in any uh, tree replacement calculation. So for example, you know, the, the, the plans that you were just reviewing at uh, uh, Greenbrier, which we haven't seen, uh, and I assume this is not the case, but if all of the trees uh, on the property would be included within the proposed building uh, lot, then none of those trees would be uh, used in the tree replacement. And essentially the developer could put buildings on that property and there would be no trees whatsoever. So over the years, we've lost quite a bit of tree canopy uh, due to some of those issues. 
And as we looked at the other townships, none of the other townships had uh, any code requirement like that. So we have proposed eliminating that. So there is no longer a tree protection or a tree non-protection zone and would require all developers to follow the current uh, tree replacement formula for all the trees on the property. And that is very similar again to the uh, other townships that we review. So the tree replacement formula is um, a one inch to four inches for uh, every tree that would be removed um, unless it's damaged or diseased. And so an arborist report would come into us telling us which trees might be damaged or diseased. They would not be counted. But all the other trees, um, we would ask for a replacement if they're going to be removed on a one inch to four inch basis. We have also updated what we are calling a heritage tree. And a heritage tree is um, used to be 24 inches. We've now upgraded that to 30 inches, uh, which is a little more lenient. But again, that follows much of what other townships are doing and what they consider to be heritage trees. Uh, if you are to remove a heritage tree that is not diseased or damaged, we require a one to one inch replacement. Theory there is that Large trees obviously take a long time to grow. Large trees provide the most benefit to the community. Uh, and there's been a lot of research that's been done on what those benefits are. Obviously, you can see, you know, it, it cleans the air, particulate pollution. It uh, uh, absorbs CO2 and produces oxygen. Um, it also helps reduce stormwater runoff. Um, studies have shown that it increases the economic values of properties uh, and also reduces crime. So our intention, obviously, is to maintain uh, as much tree canopy as we can. Uh, and the USDA uh, Center for Urban Forest Research recommends a 30% tree canopy uh, in suburban areas. Um, we have not assessed the tree canopy here in Haverford Township, uh, basically because we don't have the money to do that. And it's a rather significant undertaking. Um, one of the other things that we have done in terms of the, the code is update some of the uh, permit requirements such that if you're clearing trees, if there's a, a and you require a permit, if you're going to clear uh, six trees of six inches or more inches over the course of a year, or of course, if you're going to replace a heritage tree, again, if these are not diseased or damaged, uh, and you would have an arborist report that would, that would state that. Um, in the course of, of looking at some of the plans, we recognize that there are issues with uh, trying to plant all of the trees that may be required in the using the tree replacement formula. And there's utility right of ways, there's drainage issues, there's steep gradients and so forth. So one of the things we've added in is a way for developers, if they cannot replace all of the trees using the tree replacement formula, is to give money to the township or the township to then purchase trees and plant on public property. Um, in addition, we've cleaned up some of the language uh, just to kind of update it. As I said, we haven't reviewed it in a number of years. So we, we've looked at what current language is from an arborist and landscape architect perspective uh, and have included that. And actually we have two of our commission members are very highly, um, you know, uh, able to do this. I mean, one of our uh, members is a, a certified master arborist, one of 19 in the state of Pennsylvania. Uh, the other is a landscape architect uh, whose offices are in Radnor, so he's very familiar with their code, and he's also done work at um, uh, Longwood Gardens. So again, very technically competent and qualified to review and, and deal with some of these issues. So that's the basic gist of, of what we've done. Jerry, I don't know if you have any other comments you'd like to make. Um, that's right. We started, um, Mark Pennington, who is the chair of the Shade Tree Commission, um, came to me last fall and said, really talking about the tree exclusion zone and said, you know, this is something we need to fix. And then he said, once we fix that, we could move on. There's other things that need to be done and decided if we were going to make changes, let's try to do everything at once. So um, 
during the past six to eight months of work with Mark and with Dave Berman, the township manager, of trying to come up with this, it's very almost exactly um, the same type of ordinance that Radnor has. It's similar to Lower Marion, but closer to Radnor. They've I talked to the chair of their commission and they've not had problems, you know, it's worked well for them for about the last seven or eight years that they've had it. So um, we wanted to, we did bring it up to the board, but we did want to bring it to, to the planning commission first to see, get your impressions. Okay. Um, thank you. One question I have before I open it up for discussion, uh, Paul. This code or ordinance would apply to individual property owners. Yes, it would. Okay. Whereas currently it does not. Uh, well, it does. I mean, it, it relates to all public uh, trees. So um, any. Can you improve that de that uh, definition for me? Does that mean a pro a tree that not necessarily planted in the right of way or in a public place, but over hangs some public uh, property. So if I have a tree out front, for example, that may overhang this, the, 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 uh, the right of way, then that becomes a public shade tree? Yes. No, that, actually, I don't think that is true. I, the, I think the, with the public are ones that are in the right of way. There's language in it for trees that overhang. Um, I, the public shade tree, I think, are those that are in the right of way. Well, that's interesting because I'm reading here about, about uh, okay, they were talking about driveways and they consider that to be public trade sheet. I just misunderstood. Sorry, and I interrupted and it's not my time. I apologize. The answer to my, well, I don't, got, I don't think I got an answer to my question. If I have 20 trees in the back of my house today, I want to cut them all down. Can I do it without a permit? Um, today, no, there's still the issue of, of clearing. So you, if, if you're going to cut down more than six trees, you would need a permit. If you cut down one, two, or three trees, you would not. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, what I like to do is when, the, when we when the, when the planning commission is asked to look at an ordinance, I like to go through it and kind of make sure the wording makes sense, make sure there's no inconsistencies with other provisions in the, say, subdivision land development ordinance or any other code requirements, things like that. I might suggest some wording changes to make things a little more clear. I try not to fool with the intent of the ordinance, but uh, unfortunately, I do make a lot of red line suggestions, if you will, and I hope you don't take offense at that, but that's just the way I was brought up in the business and I can't help myself. You know what I mean? Uh, no offense. Right. Think there's been a lot of red lines uh, as we've got along. Here, okay. So adding to them won't be a problem. As Al Jolson said, you ain't seen nothing yet. Anyhow, let's start with the other members of the board. Uh, Jack, why don't you start us off if you have any questions or comments? I actually, I have two. I hope everyone can hear me. I have two questions. One, um, I like that there is now this fee in lieu of a replanting. Um, but my question is, what what does the township do with that? Is does the township have space then that they would replant trees on behalf of that owner, or is there actually more like a requirement for the owner to purchase other property or fund other property that is having is is, is it getting replanted uh, in lieu of those trees so in in other counties and other states what i've seen is that in lieu of replanting if you can't replant enough you have to actually fund a reservation that is for reforestation and I just, so I wondered what the, the township would do with fees collected in lieu of a replanting. Yeah, Phil, uh, the intent is to use the money for replanting. Um, there were, there was some concern um, that we 
couldn't expressly put that, that we talked in the beginning about a uh, shade tree fund and that the township doesn't feel that they want to separate the funds, but that the our intent is to use this money uh, for shade trees. Um, We've actually done this in the past, um, prior to you know, obviously this ordinance being in place. Um, we've allowed developers to um, to you know bank trees in lieu of planning when they aren't able to do it. Um, Mr. Storage is a good example. I know that there was at least a couple others. Um, what we've done is just you know taken the um, the funding that would have gone to the types of trees that they would have had to plant and put it towards our uh, township shade tree budget line, line item. Okay. So the, the second question I had is that what I don't see in here is any comments or requirements about pruning in the public right of way. Uh, I mean, yeah, actually, I think there is, it actually, the, there is, yeah, there is. Yeah, anything yeah. in the public right of way is actually the townships you, you need a permit to do it and it's typically the township is going to do that work so you're not um at least for a public shade tree now if you have a a tree that's not in the right of way that's overhanging a sidewalk then it's your responsibility to keep it pruned so that you're not blocking the sidewalk but for the um Public shade trees. You know, maybe, maybe maybe it's it's something that is done How about number C four. Well, it, well section one seventy dash three B says the permit required, and it talks about pruning, removing, spraying. Uh, so it, it's in that section there. Also, in your general regulation C four, doesn't it say every property owner of trees standing on private property shall keep such trees trimmed so that the minimum Clearance of any branch shall overhang any public walk is 12 feet for mature right. trees and nine feet for newly planted trees and a minimum clearance for branches overhang any public street, highway or avenue at 14 feet. It specifically says that that's what they should keep them at. Yep, right. I've read that. What I'm looking for is something that specifically is regulating what Pico is doing to the trees on the edge of my property. I don't know how that factors in across the rest of the township, but we, we certainly it's something yeah. that if, if it's not in this ordinance it should be in some ordinance unfortunately we can't regulate pico um we've tried and it they um we have no authority uh, if they, they about what they do we can request but we cannot um we can't do anything about them I will let you know that I had a conversation with the Pico people uh, in trying to screw with a couple of my beautiful big trees and uh, gave the name of my attorney and they just kept going along the road. So, uh, because I was willing to sue them. Well, they killed one of my trees. Yeah, well, I'm telling you, I know. They, they came down and killed a bunch of trees on our property years ago too. It's just sad. Okay, so maybe it doesn't belong in this discussion, but it does belong in some discussion. Somewhere, you're right. Yeah, it's just I don't think it's gonna it's gonna be a bigger. It would be a state issue. It's just that we, as a township, we don't have authority to. Okay. They're granted no. a lot of authority through the PUC, the Public Utilities Commission, uh, that we just don't have the authority to overrule or create rules for. Um, so we could start the change there, but uh, those were all, those were my only two comments. Okay, thanks, Jack. Uh, Maggie, you're up. Um, so I, along with this, are we updating the planting schedule? Um, so do we have a list of approved trees that are suitable for um, canopy shade trees versus other types of planting? Um, and is this, is this ordinance update going to be updating um, like a preferred planting list, uh, only because I know that there are some trees, obviously, that are more suitable to certain um, urban contexts and certain um, 
like a suburban lawn context. Uh, so we want to make sure that we're getting the right species of tree for health, longevity, canopy coverage, um, and those types of things. So is that part of this update at all? Uh, we actually updated that last year. So there's a separate list of trees uh, that is, uh, should be on the website of the Shade Tree Commission. And we do take a look at that uh, on a regular basis and, and constantly update that, but didn't want to include that in the ordinance because it's something that we try and uh, update on a regular basis. Okay. Um, so let's see, I had another question. I'm trying to find where it was. Um, so the fee and lieu is great. Um, and I would definitely support that where we can't get it. I guess I'm still, I'm still, I guess, a little confused as to the, so it says public shade tree does include a tree of which any part extends within the lines of any public street, highway, or avenue. Um, so to me, that does read as if you have branches. So if you were to take the, the street line and draw a straight line up, that would, if you have a tree branch that overhangs that, that would then become a public tree. That's my understanding, which is why I replied yes previously. So yes. if someone was to cut the branch back to their you know, the property line or out of the right of way, then it would no longer be a public tree. Right, okay. And so then any any kind of pruning would require a permit? Um, if, it's, if it's a street tree, yes, but not, not otherwise. Because I just know like on my street, we have very, very short front yards. Um, I'm up in Ward 5. And there's a few street trees. Um, in, in the five years that we've lived here, we've seen a number of, of significant trees and less significant trees come down on our street um, and no effort has been made to replace them. So I have lamented the loss of those. Um, so I'm hoping that this ordinance would help us then replace those um, that have been cut down. But um, we have a number of smaller trees that are maybe only seven feet off of the edge of the sidewalk. And they're not super big canopy trees. They're I don't know what kind of tree they are, but they're, they, they kind of look like um, the truffula trees in a way, um, okay. but they're, they're pretty low. But I'm just wondering, like maintenance of those, you're just kind of trimming off the bottom. So it's not, it's not like full limb cutting, but it's like minor pruning just with hand shears. Um, so I'm just wondering, that just seems onerous for a, a, an, a resident to get an application for a permit um, if they're just going out and like trimming a couple um, Again, like not major limbs. We're just talking about, you know, pruning new growth so that when you're walking down the sidewalk, you're not being hit in the face with, with some low low lying um, branches. So depending on the type of tree. So I again, I just I know the the way that the language is stated, it would trigger a permit requirement for that type of pruning, and I just feel like that's a little onerous. Uh, yeah, and Jerry, you may want to comment on this, but my understanding is that. The, the Public Works Department has a tree uh, group that actually goes around and, and does some of that pruning. So that may, in a sense, take the place of what uh, you know, a private resident may want, and they can certainly call the Public Works and request that those uh, trees be pruned if they find that it's onerous. <laughs> Well, the, the process of getting a permit is onerous, not the act of pruning them. Right, right. So, I mean, does public works come out? Like, do they notify the property owner? I'm just curious how this works, that they're going to come and prune. They don't, um, I'm sorry. I, I, if you, if, do, you, do you mind? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be. Yeah, sorry. Too many people talking. Um, public works will go out and trim street trees, uh, trees that are within the right of way. They're not going to come out and trim a tree that is on private property but happens to be hanging over. Okay. So, um, so yes, what you're saying is the, the ordinance does read that that would be required to receive a permit and Public Works is not going to come out and trim private property, trees on pro private property. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I guess, um, like, I, I understand why it's there and I, I support, I support the ordinance update as a whole. Um, and I'm, I'm very much a, a pro tree person, um, but I, I do, 
think that that kind of pruning, when it's just like overhanging onto the sidewalk um, to get a permit for that on a yearly basis for, for minor pruning might be a little, so I don't know where there's wiggle room. Um, and again, I know a lot of this is, is a matter of, of enforcement. So it's really hard to, um, I don't know, like if somebody just goes out and like trims everything down, that's, they're doing the right thing. So I just wanna make sure that we, we won't be penalizing them for not getting a permit when they're actively taking um, proactive measures to maintain the vegetation on their property in a responsible manner. Um, but obviously we, we would have concerns um, with like major tree pruning, taking off significant limbs and those types of things. So I'm not sure how best to necessarily word my concern or how best to um, suggest a modification maybe to the ordinance language, but um, just to note that minor pruning of, a, of, of tree limbs that overhang into a sidewalk to get a permit for that. Um, I just know looking at the trees on my block, my, my tree in my front yard, um, I, you know, maintain that myself. Um, so I just feel like that would be a lot to ask um, for, for a permit. Okay. I think maybe we need to um, tighten up the language. I, I think, in fact, the intent was for that the public shade tree be shade trees that are in the right of way, not a limb hanging over. Um, and so maybe that needs to be taken out because I think the limb hanging over would then be you wouldn't need a permit, but you need to make sure that you've got clearance on the sidewalk. Um, I don't know that we can take I mean, the, the language on pruning is actually in the current um, ordinance. People don't, it isn't common for somebody to come and, and ask for a permit. And I, the language is there really to prevent somebody from doing a, a bad pruning job so that, you know, it's, yeah, you, if you're taking care of the tree, nobody's going to bother you. Um, and I think really we want to be looking, restrict this more to the trees that are in the right of way. Um, because the, and the, the township where you just need to call the public works and they will come and, and do the trimming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I guess just the, the trigger of like, if you have a limb that overhangs into the sidewalk, it becomes a public tree, and then a public tree requires a permit to prune it. Uh, I think maybe there there could be um, some tweaking there so that it doesn't kind of automatically trigger uh, somebody's larger tree that's set back, not in the right of way, um, you know, that overhangs. Uh, so there's a difference between maintaining a, a tree limb that grows over into a sidewalk versus a tree itself that's in the right of way. Sounds good. Okay, all right, thank you. Um, I, otherwise, I didn't really have any other- um, and Maggie, major... Maggie yes. before you leave that point, I, something doesn't make sense here. <laughs> the ordinance says I can cut down six trees on my property every year and I don't need a permit. And then I want to trim a tree that overhangs a sidewalk, I need a permit for that? There's a, it doesn't follow. I mean, I would think if I can trim my tree, if I can cut a tree down without a permit, I should be able to trim it without a permit. Yeah, no, but I think if we're restricting it to tree, you can't cut down a a tree in the right of way without a permit. So I, I think that's where the language of just defining what trees we're talking about. Um, if it's on your property, if it's on your property, and it's not. Um, if, it, if it's you, on my property, I can trim it, right? If it's on my right. property, I can trim it. You can trim it. You can okay. do whatever. I don't need right. a permit for that. No, no, right. Unless there, it's now, where does we the did permit put this in. The does one thing is we did, we talked about a heritage tree, which a tree that's the, that's on your property that's right. greater than 30 right. inches would require a permit. The trim? Not to trim, to take down. Yeah, yeah, I understand that. Yeah. So, so Maggie, if you want to trim your tree, I think you can trim it as long as it's on your property without having to get a permit. We're talking about the trunk of the tree. Well, we're talking about trimming. Yeah, talking but we're saying you're saying that the trunk of the tree is on your property. Right. Right. Yes. yes. Right. That's what I meant. Sorry. Yeah, 
Yeah, so I know some ordinances have a regulation that that looks at the distance a tree is, like the trunk of a tree, um, either the edge of the trunk or what would be considered the center of the trunk, um, a distance from either the property line or the right of way or the sidewalk. Um, so I've seen 10 or 12 feet um, or from the, the edge of the cartway, um, like 12 feet from that. So if you have the sidewalk, anything within 12 feet would be considered like a public street tree. Um, so that's that's another way that I've seen it. I know that you, you vetted a, a number of different ordinances um, to come to this. Um, there's you know definite pros and cons of using a kind of a hard and fast measurement rule because you can argue, oh, well, it's not quite like it's, it's you know, if you, your setback is 10 feet, it's like, oh, well, it's like 10 and a half feet. So it's technically not, but like it operates as a public street tree. So that can lead to issues too. Um, yeah, so I, I, I guess I would just, um, I mean, I've made my point about the, the, the triggering of what makes it a street tree, a public street tree, when it really is just a tree on a person's front yard. Um, and of course, that, it depends on, on the type of tree if, um, in terms of the actual benefit that it provides. Um, and uh, I guess the other, so the final question I have is just how um, does the Shade Tree Commission have a plan or the township, uh, maybe Kelly, you can answer this, have a plan to advertise this to the public since this definitely impacts how people can treat the trees on their property. And I am willing to bet a lot of people don't know that these re regulations are already on the books and that we're gonna be updating them um, and again, like I've said, um, a ton of trees have come down on my street over the past few years, and I, I would be willing to put money on, on the fact that they had no idea that there was a, this wonderful ecological benefit and aesthetic benefit of having those street trees um, and the importance of replacing them if they do remove them for safety reasons. So um, I'm just curious if there's going to be like a campaign, an information campaign that we can advertise to help um, promote street trees uh, as part of the ordinance update and, and also just generally um, to promote canopy coverage across the township. Sure. Um, well, this um, this ordinance coming to this commission or to the, for the review for the planning commission uh, was just brought up last Monday. So this is, um, yeah, kind of uh, something that I haven't necessarily been completely involved in this entire time. However, um, I mean, we do have social media. We have a website. We have... Um, the newsletter was just completed, so they won't be able to go into there. But in a future newsletter, um, you know, if the shade tree would like to put something together to, you know, help us out, you know, be, you know, explain in um, simpler terms to people uh, what we're doing, you know, what the or ordinance is about, what amendments have been made, I think that'd be great. But is it there a public hearing for this, Cal? Uh, no, because this is not under the saldo or the zoning um, okay. or the zoning ordinance. This is a under 160, which is I'm sorry, 170, which is a separate ordinance. Um, but the commissioners thought it might be best to have it brought before the planning commission because it does affect the saldo. Okay. All right. Thanks, Maggie. Thank you, Jesse. No, I have nothing to add. Thank you. Nothing. David, I see you there. Here. Any comments? Uh, yes. What, what we have in front of us is not a restatement or a complete statement of what the new ordinance will be. It's only where there are changes. Is that correct? Or is this supposed to be intended to be the entire new ordinance? It's, it's the entire new ordinance. Yeah, it's, that, that's what's... Uh, hopefully have two versions. One's the new ordinance and one was the redline version of it. When I'm looking at the red line, I'm I'm not seeing what happened to old 178A, which is replacement of trees lost during construction. So I think it would be helpful to have the entire what, where all the changes are and where the deletions are to the old statute, so we can compare that if i'm missing it maybe it's maybe yeah, it's there, I, but I, I don't see it yeah the only comment i can make is that it, it may have been redundant with other parts of the code and so we just compressed it into that but <laughs> there have been several red lines so we'd have to go back 
a couple of versions. To, to well, do specifically, I'm looking. The, the thing that I was focused on was 178A, which is replacement of trees lost during construction, and there. That establishes the one inch to four inch um, diameter uh, ratio for replanting. But then it specifically says, and I, I don't see an equivalent uh, statement uh, in the new, it says a permit shall be required for the removal of any tree with a 24 inch caliper or greater. So that raises two issues. One is, there's no statement that says a permit shall be required for trees of a certain diameter. And secondly, um, you're, re you're increasing that diameter to 24 inches, I mean, 30 inches from 24 inches. And um, 24 inches to me seems already a pretty good sized, uh, nice tree. And I don't see the reason why the replacement ratio for a 24 inch tree or greater than 24 inch uh, needs to be increased to 30. I think Maybe our reasoning, the justification for that. Yeah, the reasoning we defined a heritage tree, if we define it as 24 inches, mm -hmm. and we're requiring, I think we, at this point, if you're on private property, and you have a, a tree, you want to take down a tree, you take down a tree, we are trying to protect the older trees. And we felt if we defined it too narrowly or 24 that we would get more acceptance if we went to 30 inches um so that was uh, in order to define it's the the ordinance needs to be consistent throughout so we defined we could have defined the heritage tree as 24 inches but then it also would have impacted what trees that a homeowner could take down without a permit the, uh, the 30 inches also comes from the USDA Center for Urban Forest Research. That's that's their definition of a large statute tree. It's a 30 inch diameter. So we followed that, and it's also consistent with the other township ordinances that we looked at. So you're anticipating opposition to it, and therefore anticipating the opposition and enlarging the size for the potential opposition you may get, and also to make it consistent with federal or other townships. Certainly they consistent. Right. Right. To me, that's not enough, but I'd be interested in others, what others think. 20, to me, 24 inches is a, a nice sized tree that I would just as soon not see cut down or at least have to be replaced one to one. You know, in looking at the definition of heritage tree, it looks like we downsized from 36 inches to 30 inches. Well, the, you know, this is the, there have been many red line versions. So okay. the, there was one with, with 30, the initial suggestion was 24, we went to 36 and then we came back to 30. Okay. I can get you the other red line version as That's well. All right. as it is. I'll take your word for it. I think it would be helpful to have a comparison of what was and what you're now proposing without the interim versions. Okay. Anything else, Dave? Uh, not for now. Okay. Mr. Reardon. Um, I have uh, several questions, and uh, I, I first want to say that uh, uh, I have over 5,000 specimen varieties on one of my properties in the township uh, plantings. Uh, I have brought in 35 foot fir oaks and planted them on my property at considerable expense when I had to take one down that failed. I am uh, a lover of my gardens and I am uh, a believer in a lot of what you all are trying to accomplish. I would like to make certain that Haverford College, which is one of seven national arboretums and encompasses hundreds of acres, 
And there are only seven national arboretums. Two of them happen to be in the Philadelphia region. One of them is Haverford's, and the other one is the Scott Arboretum at at um, um, at um, Swarthmore. There's also one at Harvard, and there is also one at uh, Vanderbilt University. I know that one quite well as my alma mater. But and and there are several others, and I've seen most of them. And I don't think that their taking down of six trees should require a. Um, they have been in the process for the last 20 years of getting rid of every single Norway maple on their property, uh, something that nobody, no, a tr species of tree that nobody in the township should have. Uh, it's a mess of a tree and they take down 50, 60 of them a year. And for that to become an issue for the township, it's plain ridiculous. Uh, similarly, they're working on similar programs at, um, at the, at two different golf courses on the pro uh, in the township, and to equate the uh, maintenance and taking care and and uh, the tree work that goes into either uh, uh, either of the golf courses in the township is uh, uh, beyond belief that this should be included. Um, I have a next door neighbor who has recently acquired their the property beyond his 1.25 acres to include another 400 foot by 1,000 foot deep property over eight acres. And in this spring, I can't tell you the untold numbers of thousands of dollars he has spent in taking out all of the weed junk trees. He's brought in over 50 trees to put in. They're not huge trees, but they're good sized trees to replant that entire property and put it in permanent land back. But he wouldn't have touched it with this with this uh, regulation in place because it is onerous. And I have spent huge amounts of money on our newer property. I haven't sold my old property yet, but uh, we just had a tornado come through between me and the next door neighbor and snap off trees and across the street at Allgate, there are 15 trees that are topped from that tornado, and we, and and I have a a, a, a a beautiful old walnut tree that I'm almost certain we're not going to be able to save, but I put a lot of money into it. Last uh, month, uh, my next door neighbor on the other side of me uh, had a, a tree come down, looked good, okay, hit my house, did thousands of dollars of damage, 85-foot tree. He generously, after... And I, it was my expense because it's called an act of God. And uh, my one-year-old roof, okay, had 17 holes in it, and it poured into my house. And I'm going to tell you, he very nicely looked at all the other trees, assessed them, and determined to take down seven trees before this last storm came, or I would have had more trees in my yard than you can count at just in that one I had 5,500 walnuts in my front yard from the three walnut trees out front. I don't believe that you can equate uh, uh, multiple acre properties and turn around and say that they can't, that they are exactly the same as somebody whose property is a quarter of an acre. It just doesn't work. It's, it's, there are, how, there are, when I was a boy on, Cooperstown Road, there were six homes. Now there are about 14 or 15, but it is a lot. It, it is in a particular part of the township where there are large properties. And to turn around and say that each and every property is the same property doesn't equate. I have a tree in the front yard of my old house on Millbrook Lane that sat in front of the Japanese Exhibition Hall in, a, in 1876 for the Centennial Exhibition. It was the very first dwarf Japanese maple brought into the United States. Bartlett Trees knows all about it because the base is only about a foot across, even though the tree's 150 years old. It's not a heritage tree, but it's the very first dwarf Japanese maple ever brought into this country. It amazes me that we make our definitions and we don't have any room to figure out. Uh, I don't see how 
you can turn around and say that that a person with 10 acres of land has a six tree limit when um uh when uh, a person with a quarter of an acre may have five trees and he can take them all down. It, it, there's got to be some kind of proportionality to this. And I know you're struggling to get it done, but I don't see how you can throw those golf courses and uh, the uh, Haverford College Arboretum under these guidelines and even begin to say that there's any sense of fairness there because they work tirelessly to give us open space and beautiful areas in the township, and they should be exempt from this. Uh, can I just respond that, I, because this has come up before, um, Radnor has had the same ordinance, essentially the same ordinance for seven or eight years. They have a number of golf courses, they have a number of large colleges, the Shade Tree Commission says in that time they have not had issues dealing with them. They've been able to work everything out. Um, so they I may know. have said that. They also, uh, when I went to get a uh, permit for a friend of mine's new kitchen, they told us it's 90 days to wait for a permit for kitchens in Radnor Township. That doesn't make them smarter than we are. Okay, well, we I'm, just, one in three days. I'm not saying they're smarter than us, but it's, it's their experience working with the same type of um larger landowners well you know uh if that's the case and they have larger landowners i don't i we've got a six it says anybody who takes down more than six trees got to get permits i just don't see it i really don't i am sorry i feel like this is this is i feel like this is uh um uh, i feel like it's a taking and i am uh I am, uh, I am, I am, I am not the person for this ordinance unless it is modified in some way to take into effect that there's some kind of uh, proportionality to the scale of the properties and that certain properties need to be given uh, other, uh, the idea of just simply always permit, 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 permit. So money, 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 money. It just, at some point, we have to turn around and say, you know, enough's enough. I'm sorry. Chuck, you uh, just want you to understand that, that there, this ordinance is coming to us tonight as a courtesy, since it's not a subdivision or land development or zoning related ordinance. Technically, the Planning Commission, you know, doesn't have any say in the matter. I understand. Uh, it, it, it seems as though as a private citizen, you have the same recourse all of us do as far as making your thoughts known to your commissioner. But the reason this thing came to us today is not because it had no ordinance. It's because the board of commissioners requested that it come to us. I understand. I understand. So it was a quasi official request. Okay. All right. Um, I have a, a few comments and Paul, I hope you have a copy of the ordinance at your disposal there. I have uh, the red line that was yep, sent out. I have. All right. I'm just going to go over the main comments that I have. What I'd like to do is just mail you my marked up version so you have it. Okay. okay. Take it under consideration. I don't want to waste everybody's time with my nitpicking. That's uh, fine. But anyhow, um, to start off, uh, the definition of caliper inches, I don't understand that. Caliper inches versus? Yes. I don't, the definition. Okay. So this comes from the, our, our arborist in terms of how arborists measure a tree, a, replacement trees or new trees to be planted right different than trees that are being taken down or in trees that already exist i understand diameter so say, type. Where, the, where do you take the measure um uh, 12 inches or lower on the stem 12 inches below what 
Standard measurement of nursery stocks diameter taken 12 inches or lower on stem, depending on propagation method and size category. 12 That's inches or lower on stem. Lower than what? Lower than the 12 inches. <laughs> but where do you start? I mean, you got to start somewhere to measure down to 12, 12 inches. inches. You would start at 12 inches. Well, all right. So it, it, is it easier? At 12 to inches, you would take that. The, that would be the caliber inch. Would it be off easier to ground? Do? 12 inches above the root ball? Would that be an easier way to off do Off the root ball, yeah, off of the flare, the root okay. ball. I, I suggest you make some, make a change where someone knows where they're starting from. I don't, I didn't understand that language, that's all. Okay, fair enough. Um, the definition of grading, um, again, there's a lot of words in there that, that are redundant or don't mean anything. I think grading is simply modifying the existing surface of the land. We had not changed that definition from the original. Excuse me? We did not change that definition right, from uh, the original. So whatever, it, I mean, I'm, I'm happy right, to make it can, changes. So we can make it whatever we want, correct? Correct. Is there, okay. is there a benefit to um, using the same definition of grading that we use in the saldo? There is no definition for grading in the saldo. Do we have a definition for grading in other ordinances that we can we have use? have a definition for earth disturbance which is any activity which disturbs the existing surface of the land. Now, I'm satisfied with that definition also. Or also Chapter 78. The ordinance and the SADO do not have definitions for grading. I feel like we should have definitions for grading in the SADO. It's all entirely in Chapter 78 for um, erosion and, and settlement control. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Under your tree replacement formula, okay, Yes. We have references to diameter in there instead of DBH and caliper. I think we're going to trouble to find DBH and caliper. We should use them in our replacement formula and not rely on the word diameter. All right. Fair enough. Okay. That happens under heritage trees as well. Under paragraph three, under tree replacement formula, uh, the owner in the first line, the owner will make a payment. I think that should say shall make a payment. Um, go, moving on to general regulations, which is paragraph C, the paragraph six. On all new building sites, the owner or contractor, you have that part? Yes. All right. I think we need to add a statement in there that says that the public shade tree shall be located at least 24 inches from all existing and proposed property and right of way lines. All right. Okay. Um, 170-4A. Subparagraph 1C, rating in, in excess of 300 cubic yards. I'd rather see an aerial requirement like 5,000 square feet. 5,000 square feet is the limit that of disturbance that would require an erosion and sedimentation control permit. Correct, Chuck? Yeah. Okay, so 300 cubic yards could be 16,000 square feet and six inches of topsoil, and that's 300 cubic yards. And that's, that's quite an area. So I, I think the square footage is more important than the cubic yardage. Well, fair enough. Again, that was in the original, and we didn't I understand. change it. Yep. Um, going under... Um, Paragraph, subparagraph 8, 170-5. 70-5. It's right above 170-6. Paragraph 8. Okay. Uh, again, the wording in there, the last sentence. Oh. Are you talking about in the event replanning? is impractical it says the applicant has the option of shouldn't that say 
shall make payment to the township? It's like I have a choice of giving money or not. Okay. I'll leave that to Jerry to. Uh, That's good. Okay. And that instead of the word contributions, we say that payments received shall be utilized for replacement trees elsewhere in the township um, at the rate set by the Board of Commissioners. That's wording similar to what we used before. One seventy dash seven, paragraph A. Again, you have you're using the word diameter instead of DPH in clearing. I mean caliper. Okay. And then one last one last comment, and that goes back to definitions. The definition of tree. Would there be any objection to adding the word viable in there under that definition? Under public shade tree? No, under definition of tree. Oh, the tree, the next one. Instead um, of saying any any viable woody perennial plant? That's what, I mean, viable. suppose I have six dead trees or 10 dead trees on my property. What is the process to remove them? Do I need a permit to remove dead trees? No. No. Okay, that, that's why there's nothing in here that, that lists any exceptions to this code or this ordinance as far as trees that might be diseased or dead. So an easy way to do it is to find a tree as something that's viable or write a section about exceptions. That's, okay. That's all I had. And uh, can, well, you said you'll send those to me or yeah, to Jerry? Or? Can you give me your address and I'll mail them to you? Or sure. do you want to email me and send me your address if you don't want to give it over to TV Airways? Better idea. Or Kelly can give it to me. Can you give yeah, me yeah, it? Yeah, Kelly can get it to you. She has my okay. email. All right, I'll stick this in the mail for you guys, okay? You okay with that, Jerry? Yeah, that'd be fine. If you, you could get it to me as well, that'd be great. Okay. Appreciate it. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, we don't. We don't have to take any action, right, Cal? That's exactly right. No, thank you. I appreciate your time. Thank you for, for allowing us the opportunity to review this. And, um, um, you know, if you have any other need for us to look at anything down the line, feel free. Sounds great. Okay, Thanks, Angelo, I had a question, which is if, if you change the word to viable as opposed to creating an exception, uh, how does the What's the check on the landowner that the tree, in fact, was not viable? Well, what's the Make, check? Who makes that decision and how does it get made? Dave, what's the, what's the check on any property owner that takes down trees? It's going to be his neighbors, you know? Yeah. I mean, if, if you have a big backyard and you start cutting down trees, your neighbors might complain. If they don't complain, you get away with it. What can I say? The township doesn't have the resources to, to run around every day looking at seeing who's cutting down trees. I mean, it's kind of like an honor system, I would think. I just think if you put viable into the definition, it invites people to say, well, that's not a viable tree. Well, an exception, they have to, and they, you have to demonstrate it by an arborist's yeah. certification, then at least it's something. And that's an added burden to the property owner, I think. Well, but anyhow. Um, I'm it, sorry, before you know, we totally finish up, I do have two public comments, so. It's good that you bring up the point. It's something that, that the commissioners can think about, the Shade Tree Commission can think about how they want to modify, if they want to modify that part of the code. Okay. Okay. Um, Thank you very much. Oh, wait. No. Thank you. Hold on. The public comment related oh, to the ordinance. Comment. Sorry. Yes, there's two. Um, yeah. And they're both quite lengthy. Um, the first one is from um, Marion Golf Club, um, which has... Dear gentlemen, we are writing you on behalf of Marion Golf Club in regard to the proposed amendment to ordinance number P10-2020, chapters 170, trees, which is agenda item number three for review of the planning commission this evening. We are in full support of the township's efforts to protect, excuse me, to protect healthy trees and their importance to prevent flooding, soil erosion, 
and pollution within the township borders, as well as the beauty they provide to both private residents and public spaces. We recognize that drafting such amendments is a comprehensive process, and we are pleased to see that in Chapter 170-A1, that one of the purposes, uh, that the purpose is to provide latitude in the interpretation and application of township rules, standards, and guidelines when a reasonable and necessary, when reasonable and necessary, to minimize the destruction of trees. And that in Chapter 170B remains the intent that the article is not intended to cause hardship on any individual or private or public company that uses reasonable care and diligence to protect trees within Haverford Township. Marion Golf Club is a unique, in a unique position to have many trees on both our east and west golf courses, and we work hard to maintain their healthy, sorry, their health and stability. We take great pride in the trees on our property and spend roughly thirty thousand dollars a year on plant health services to help preserve unique trees and specimen trees that call Marion home. In addition to preserving those trees, Marion has also been replanting according to the Shade Tree Commission current replacement formula. It has allowed Marion to pick better habitats and better specimens around their property to increase safety and protection for golfers, neighbors, and passerbys. However, our primary focus is to maintain healthy turf grass surfaces on our golf courses. Golf course maintenance is a complex process and there are instances where healthy trees compete with our ability to grow turf grass on specialized surfaces on the golf course. Turf needs four things to survive, water, air, sun, and soil. With a decrease in sunlight, the turf can decline and possibly die. This can have an extremely negative effect on course conditioning and playability, which would negative, negatively in, impact the club's ability to preserve our greatest asset and host major events. Before removal or pruning of any healthy tree, and with the help of various professionals, um, just some, some tree companies, um, USDA, um, Et cetera, et cetera. Uh, Marion carefully documents our tree maintenance program and will continue to do so in the future. Thank you for your time and consideration this evening, and we look forward to continued discussions regarding the proposed amendments to the ordinance. And the second, which is even longer. Sorry. Uh, it is, uh, sorry, this is from um, Leonard Country Club. Uh, it has come to our collective attention that Haverford Township is in the process of deliberating the, and uh, the enacting and ordaining of a new amended ordinance of Chapter 170 trees. As a long-tenured golf course superintendent, and I'm going to mess this word up, uh, agar tree person. <laughs> Thank no, it doesn't say arborist. Um, if it was arborist, I would have. We'll say arborist. Uh, I understand the need for an updated version of the ordinance. Uh, that being said, we would like to have an opportunity to discuss the planning commission with the planning commission the prospect of a unique variance for golf courses. Uh, as a manager of close to 130 acres of land, we would like we would at, we ask that the township consider our input to form a practical, affordable, and reasonable way forward. Haverford Township has a rich tradition of being one of the best places to live in the tri-state area. Part of that fabric is the presence of Lanark Country Club. As a club, it has contributed, uh, hosting many state and local events, employed many local people, being part of the neighborhood since 1901, preserving a large open tract of land for the visual enjoyment of all. Over the decades, the golf course has done the following, operated successfully with the shade, uh, it says shade commission, but I believe they meant shade tree commission, aggressively planted more trees and other horticultural along, horticulture along the borders of the properties that were moved spent in excess of $30,000 a year to perform best management practices for the trees. With the assistance of our full-time professional horticulturist, horticulturalist and my knowledge as a seasoned, uh, I'm going to just say arborist, guys, I'm sorry, uh, we have made the sound decision in regards to balancing tree health and personal safety. We've even gone as far to use ISA certified arborist to determine hazardous pruning slash removals. Lanark has made large financial investments to maintain and preserve our specimen trees and plant new trees that are indigenous and provide autumn color. Utilize shade uh, studies using Sunseeker and Arborcom technologies to determine pruning slash removals of USGA green section arborists to document potential tree removals slash pruning. As we utilize all of the listed best practices for tree management, we are also responsible to distinguish ourselves from the other course with tough level turf grass conditions. To do that in some area of the course, we must tactfully remove some trees to provide a better microenvironment. 
A byproduct of these removals and pruning is a healthier stand of turf grass that is excellent for erosion control, noise reduction, and air pollution. As we move forward, we also face the rapid decline of ash trees, lanternfly damage on maple and birch trees, and not to say increased drought and flooding damage. Compounding that, many of the courses throughout the United States were overplanted with non-indigenous trees in the early 1920s and 1930s that have now started to reach the end of their life cycle. Sometimes those factors require us to make rapid decisions on tree pruning and or removal strictly for life safety. We would request that based on our extensive knowledge and educa educated management of trees that the township would consider allowing us to be more dexterous in the ability to trim, remove, replant, and replant trees on the golf course. We would also be happy to go into more detail via an in-person or Zoom meeting at a later date. Lanark is committed to collaboration with the Planning Commission to form an intelligent and viable ordinance that is beneficial to all involved. Just like you, we would like to take proper amount of time to assist in developing an ordinance the right way the first time. Thank you for your consideration. We are looking forward to speaking with you soon. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, right. Since um, I, I, we aren't making any official uh, recommendations or um, uh, anything of that sort, um, what I think I would be more appropriate is if I forwarded these letters to the Shade Tree Commission um, and potentially the Board of Commissioners uh, for their um, interaction, which seems to make more sense. Sounds good. Thanks, Gil. Mm -hmm. All right. So again, thank you guys for coming. Right. Uh, have a good thank night. you. Appreciate the comments. Yeah. Have a good night. Thank you sure. both. Okay. Moving right. Chuck Foster, you know about this? Well, let me try to explain it briefly, yes, why not you? if I could. So Delcor is a Delaware County Regional Authority. It's one of the authorities that operates in the area <laughs> and actually receives sewage from the Hafford Township. Um, there's, there's a, and primarily what their purpose is, Delcor, is conveyance of sewage, and they also do treatment. So I don't know if anybody um, actually looked at went in and looked at the um, the information that Kelly sent, but there is a map in there of the county and it does give you the Delcor service area, okay? Most of which is in Eastern Delaware County along the river. They do operate a treatment plant down there. They operate numerous large pump stations that are on the order of 40 and, six, or 40 and 60 million gallons a day. Okay, so it, it's basically conveyance and collection, conveyance and, and in some aspects treatment. Okay, what happens, how that affects Delaware County? First of all, they want to sell their system. Okay, they've reached an agreement with Aqua uh, to sell their system. Um, the DEP requires that they go through a planning process. Anybody who, anybody who sells their system goes through a planning process, evaluates all the alternatives um, that may be um, um, you know, out there that may be, uh, may be viable to them and, and gets input from all the municipalities that they service. Okay. So that's why this is before you right now. Um, in a, in a roundabout way, Delcor services the Haverford Township. So what they are looking for is input um, any input on planning aspects that the township and, and specifically the planning commission might have with regard to this sale. Now, having said that, let me just briefly tell you what happens when you flush a toilet or turn on your water in a township. Okay. Um, there's two basins in this township. Okay. There's a Cobbs Creek basin and there's a Darby Creek basin. This Delcor only services the Darby Creek basin and that services only about third of the township. Okay. To the other two thirds is serviced by goes through upper Darby and goes directly to the city of Philadelphia In the Darby Creek basin, um, sewage from Hanford township first goes to the Radnor Hanford Markle sewer authority, which owns interceptors along the Darby Creek. Okay. It then discharges to other interceptors that are owned by the Darby Creek joint authority. And then eventually goes to Delcor's pumping stations. They pump that sewage to the city of Philadelphia's wastewater treatment plant. So you're going through a number of entities here. And, uh, you know, as we saw tonight, some of the things that happen um, um, 
when somebody wants to add a connection or do a subdivision or something like that, they must get a sewage facilities planning module, just like uh, Greenbrier. Um, that means they must go and get capacity sign-offs from every entity from Haverford Township to the city of Philadelphia. And make sure, and, and what that's saying is we have capacity, enough capacity in our system for that um, particular connection. So that's, that's how Dalcora plays into Haverford Township. Haverford Township owns their own sanitary sewer system. They will still own their own sanitary sewer system after this. They will still control the planning aspects of their system. Okay. Um, the, the only thing that's really going to change in, in respect to this is, you know, somebody submits a planning module um, and once, you know, needs a capacity sign off, it will, you know, if the sale does go through and is approved by DEP, it'll change, that entity will change from being Delcora to being Aqua. Okay. So, um, you know, in, in short, there, there's, there's not much change um, in, in this sale um, going from Delcora to um, uh, Aqua in terms of Haverford Township. So, um, and again, some of the planning aspects, and again, this is, this is more related to planning than it is operational or, or financial or anything like that. But um, some of the planning aspects that are typ typically done uh, by the township or uh, Act 537 updates or planning modules, okay, that will not change. The township will still initiate that and everything. Um, there is a Chapter 94 reports, which have to be done yearly for the township, and that's a report that goes to DEP that gives the status of the system, um, the new connections, typically how much flow there is, um, there are any problems or SSOs, sanitary sewer overflows, anything like that. And then there's also the planning module reviews and everything that are done. So again, all that will be the same as it is today with the exception of um, the, the change from Delcor to potentially Aqua when this goes through. So I don't know if anybody has any specific questions or wants more clarification on, on, on anything. I'd be happy to go over in more detail if, if that's the case. The, uh, the, the truck lines along Darby Creek, Chuck, they'll still be owned by the individual authorities along the route? That's correct. Okay. It will still be owned by Radnor Hadford, Marple, Sewer Authority, and Darby Creek Joint Authority. Yes. Okay. Well, the only thing I saw in all that stuff that Kelly sent us is in the resolution that they offered, mm -hmm. they say something about they identify alternative number one as being this selected plan, which is sale to Aqua PA. But in the report, that's listed as alternative number two. Oh, yes, you are correct. That's that's the only thing I noticed. Yep. And, and and they also do elaborate a little bit on the sale and why they're doing this. Um, you know, if, if anyone has a chance to read that, but in 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 summary, they have a lot of they have a lot of agreements with a lot of municipalities, including the water department. They're regulated by the DEP by the EPA. They have an, the Delaware County is a very old infrastructure. <laughs> um, they have a lot of I and I in the system. They have a lot of aging system, um, and they have a lot of of expense. They're looking at millions and millions of dollars of expense in in trying to rehab the system to meet all those requirements. So, in in, in their mind, it's easier for them to sell the system, give it to somebody else, let them do it. And I believe they also have a statement in here, any excess proceeds will be put in a fund to try to um, um, lower, you know, future rate increases. Okay. But there's a good possibility that rates will go up as a result of the sale. Every, yeah, it's possible. Okay. All right. Anybody have any comments? Okay. Uh, what do we need, Kelly? Um, I... Suppose just uh, maybe um, if there's no comments, a motion saying to. Um, Other than the typo in the resolution. 
Um, right, but so we were, um, this meeting was for the, um, to address the public comment requirements for Delcora, um, yeah. so that we can uh, forward them any of those that we have, or send them a letter saying that we don't have any comments. I'm okay saying we have no comments. Everybody okay with that? Yes. Okay, it looks like everybody nodded yes, yep. yeah, so. Great. Council Planning Commission has no official comments regarding uh, Delcora's plan to sell their facilities to Aqua PA. Wonderful. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, finally, uh, we have minutes from our July meeting. I believe they've been circulated. Everyone's had a chance to weigh in on those. Anybody have any further comments they want to make? Okay. Seeing none, um, I'll make a motion. We approve the minutes from our July planning commission meeting. Second. Uh, Kelly, take a roll call. Sure. Uh, Mr. Capuzzi? Yes. Mr. Reardon? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I muted you because your uh, papers were. Let's see. There we go. He said yes. Yes. <laughs> sorry. Um, Mr. Poynton. Yes. Mr. Shannon. Yes. Ms. Dobbs. Yes. And Mr. Garrett. Yes. Wonderful. Okay. Okay. That's about it for tonight. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn unless someone else has something they want to bring up or mention. Nobody does seem to want to talk anymore. So yeah. <laughs> I certainly don't. That was a lot of talking for me tonight. All right. I'll make a motion. We adjourn. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 All opposed. Okay. Aye. You guys have it. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank um, you. We Thank are. Everybody. I have. Um, I have a submission. I think the next we are going to be meeting on September tenth. So. Um, September tenth. September tenth. So unless otherwise, okay. something happens, we will see, you, see you in September. Thank you. Okay. Thank have you. a good night.